it's March, uh, Grandma's Recipe Box Block Party here at Prairie Point, and I'm getting ready to show you one more block. So I want to show you, uh, give you some few tips on the pattern, and then we'll do half square triangles. Uh, you already know how to do those, and then a little trick on keeping the star points uh, looking just perfect. This is what the block looks like this month. Very easy, two fabrics plus background. Okay, for the recipe, I mean the uh, <laughs> the pattern. Um, I have a cutting diagram on here for the background and for the two print pieces. So follow those carefully and you can't really miss in cutting them out. Just remember, measure twice, cut once, and uh, look at your ruler carefully. Make sure you have plenty of lighting. Make sure you're not too tired so you don't measure four and a quarter instead of when, when you should have four and a half and, and that sort of thing. So get those done. And then the first thing you're gonna do is make four half square triangles and they'll be uh, put into a little pinwheel block that's gonna go into the center of the block. So you can't really tell it's a pinwheel here in the, in the same way because it matches the, the star points, but that's what it will be. Okay, you have two different colors. One is medium and one is dark. So what I want you to do is decide which one you want to be medium and which dark. Uh, dark isn't necessarily the darker one. It's just really a matter of placement and where you want it. So decide which is medium, which is dark, and then keep that throughout um, when you're making the, the other parts of the block. Okay, so to make the little star points here, you're gonna have two rectangles. <clears throat> Again, separate them. So I'm gonna call this uh, dark and this one medium. And the uh, instructions are given with the direction that you're gonna sew your seam line on each one. So they're going to be mirror images uh, of each other making this little block here. They're not identical, they're mirror images. So when you put your little square on the dark one, you put that on there and you can draw your line and sew it. Um, this is the medium one, you're gonna do the same thing but you're gonna draw your line this way. Uh, this one will be so in this way, this one, this, in this direction. <clears throat> if you want to use your folded corner clipper or your simple folded corners ruler, then you will simply just put it right on there. Let's see, here we go. Like that. <clears throat> and do that to all four of them that you're gonna make that way. And then uh, on the other one, since you didn't draw the line, if you, if you chose to opt out that method, um, you, you're going to use this and you can't have it sitting in front of you the same way. You're going to have to turn this because you want that line to go this way. So just turn your unit like this. And that's where you can really get into trouble is if you forget to turn it and then you'll end up with two of them the same way. So here you have um, them going in different directions and then you're going to sew a quarter inch. I don't know if you can see that. I should have used a darker thread. And so a quarter inch on each one of these, and these will open up this way. You'll press it. Now the directions tell you to press the dark one, press the seam toward the dark, okay? So be sure and do that. Press that one toward the dark, this one toward the background, okay? So that when you do that, these are already pressed. When you do that and you put these together to make the little unit, the seams are going to lock and you won't have as much bulk in there. They should match up just the exact same size. When you put pieces like this together, make sure they do. If you start sewing along here and this one comes out a little bit longer in the end, don't let that happen. Before you get to the end, hold those together or pin it or something so that they come out the same size. Because sometimes they start out the same size, but when you sew, you push it along. Your presser foot might push it along. Don't allow that to happen. Help it to ease in as you get there so that things are um, coming out together in any kind of block units that you're making. So you get that done, you do all of those, you'll have a pile of each, sew them together into these little units, and you'll have four of these. So we are going to put these together with this in the middle and see the importance of calling dark, dark in um, each technique you make because if you didn't, then if you put the purple here and the blue here, then you wouldn't have the same effect, okay? So make sure you do that. You're going to actually sew 
these together to make this unit. You're going to put these on here to make the center. And then this goes down here on the sides. And there you have your block. This is the um, Waldorf salad one with our 30s prints. This is the uh, apple crunch recipe with this uh, fun little background in it. And then we have the Icebox Cookies Christmas block right here. So you get two fabrics plus background this time. So it's a really simple block this month. It won't take you very long to make it. You'll have so much fun. You could actually make a dozen of these just like this and put them together into a quilt or make more of them. It'd be a fun one to do and quick and easy. Remember block parties the second, two, second Monday and second Saturday of each month and um, bring your block in from last month finished and you get the better price. And just remember also the pattern. Read carefully. This time I even highlighted, uh, put in bold and uh, italics some, some of it so that you remember to do that. Follow the cutting diagrams and you can't go wrong. <laughs>